So negotiating peace is like making a decision regarding a football foul. Both teams will have their opinion on it. Not everyone will agree with it, but each side accepts it and the game resumes. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri Jaiwardhan and I'm 18 years old. And I will be speaking on how to maintain peace, something my brothers and I are still working on. Because agreeing to peace is easy, but maintaining it is the real challenge. So I will be telling you how we can maintain peace through the accomplish accomplishments of SDGs 4 and 16 for a better tomorrow from the perspective of a youth. Education can be simply interpreted as a means for an individual to learn how to think and act. Through history, it has been a weapon that empowers the oppressed to fight back and shatter oppression in a civilized manner. For a country to develop an efficient teaching system, it should accomplish the following criteria. Firstly, content of the syllabus. Secondly, relevancy of the syllabus. It should be relevant to the current events of the world. And thirdly, and most importantly, importance of practical knowledge over theoretical knowledge. Now, creativity is a gift when you are a child. But in schools, we are forced to cram lines from books, memorize them, and write it word for word when we are tested. Now, it does test us on the ability of memorization, but it deprives us of our uniqueness as children, creativity, and adaptability. These are qualities, I must stress, that differentiate a regular leader from an exceptional oh, one. They are Wait a second. So, uh, basically, in Sri Lanka, island-wide government school students receive free education, but their knowledge on the subject is laid in terms of practice and creativity in applying that knowledge. While private school students receive a more advanced curriculum relative to the government schools, but they have to pay for it. So naturally, most parents prefer sending their child to a private school. I am an example as I was in a private school until year five and afterwards I moved on to a government school. So I know what it's like, but this hasn't stopped people from succeeding in the past. But if the curriculum proposed by the government is revised in a way that even students who go to government schools can receive an advanced curriculum. We will see improvement in vocabulary and critical thinking. Now, just immediately after the civil war in Sri Lanka, domestic crime rates increased because, you know, progress slowed down and there were other complications as well. It was a few years later that development and reformation in the North started going on and crime rates reduced. But I ask you this question, is imprisonment a permanent solution to crime? And who is a criminal? In simple terms, whoever breaks rules enforced by the governing sector of a country can be termed as a criminal. But let's go a bit deeper into it. Why do people break rules? Maybe because, it's, maybe because it, they, they, they feel it's unjust. Maybe because of extreme poverty. There are various reasons. The bottom line is, the higher the rates of crime, the higher the probability that the education system is failing. My points to support this argument are as follows. The first is that education creates preferences and choices in a person. Secondly, Education contributes to lower time preference by learning the consequences of one's actions that postpone direct satisfaction of needs. Also, with more education individuals have, they tend to weigh future consequences more. So it is important that we ensure that all children receive a quality education because it directly contributes to the preliminary stages of SDG 16. As for the educated youngsters coming out into the workforce, we should involve ourselves in this to fix these issues with creativity and adaptability and ensure a better tomorrow. Uh, please direct your attention to this video. Uh, there's an error in the audio, but you can see what's going on. This kid sees that there's a tree along the road. He takes the first step, and there are the children joining him. Now the adults join him, and together they succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, war is improving. Nuclear warfare, biological warfare, and even sibling warfare. But as war advances, so should peace. The enemy is at the door, ladies and gentlemen. So my message to the young listeners of today, learn, because what you, or what you do or don't do today will have an impact tomorrow on you and your children. Respect others' ideas and their rights, and most importantly, take action. Let us show the world that it is our time to lead. There is a change coming. Let it start with me. Let it start with you. Because remember, without me or you, there is no us. Thank you.